while I'm doing a poll here, I just want to tell you, I wear a lot of hats. And today we're wearing a Rally Tech hat and doing polls on a cross track on the dyno. Yeah, that was one pull. <laughs> and that was only second gear. Uh, 2013 cross track manual transmission. These things are as far as horsepower goes. But that's okay because we're going to fix it here at Rally Tech today. The software we're currently tuning on is called Subaru Edit. And it's an interesting software suite that supports pretty much all of the FB engines that are on the market, FB ECUs, etc., that are on the market. And if we go ahead and pull up the graph from the run that I just did, you'll see what I was talking about uh, with how sad the horsepower is on these cars. So that run put down a whopping 112 horsepower, 112 foot-pounds of torque. Now this is the manual transmission car, so we at least have a shifter and it's not the CVT, but the CVT sometimes might actually help you because if you look at this torque down low, we don't have peak torque until 32, 30, about 3200 to 4200. We're kind of flat on torque there. But down here, we're pretty lacking. So the CVT at least is gonna flare the engine RPM up into this torque band. We're gonna use air quotes for torque band, but it's not great. Additional to the just lack of power and torque, you can see up here past about 5600, it starts to enrich to the point of just flatline 10 -0 air fuel. And as you can see, power also drops right where that enrichment happens. So we might be able to get a little back up top here, get us up maybe above 120 if we're lucky, but mainly we're gonna focus on down low. And the reason why we're gonna focus on down low is because the modification that people make to these cars typically is big tires, roof racks, roof tents, overland stuff. And when you're trying to overland, being able to drive the car at a low RPM is super important. So that's where we're gonna focus our time today. Uh, if we're lucky, we'll pick up a little, little up top, but not so worried about that. Really, from there, down is what our focus is. Went ahead and flashed the car with some values that I wanna start at. And we're gonna see if it picks up a little bit of power or torque or loses power or torque. And we're gonna go from, from here. So here we go. So we're doing second gear pulls because this thing's so slow with these tires that if we do third gear, it just never finishes the pull. I tried doing third gear the other day um, and I just I just couldn't just couldn't do it. So here we go, second gear. Oh, traction, traction, traction control off, here we go. Second, second gear. stopped yet so we saw 118.3 horse and 118.7 torque looks like I started the run just a hair later I'll, I'll, I'll try to start it at a lower rpm next time but we're carrying eight foot pounds of torque through the entire rev range there that's that's like six percent more power but up top remember I said I could probably get some more power we were 107, now we're 116, so that's a 10 horse gain. Let's do right here. We were 108, now we're 118. So 10 horsepower up top. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're eight foot pounds of torque and 10 horse up. The air fuel ratio, let's, let's change this a little bit so we can see. In the blue, well, let's go to the red. The red, we dropped real rich and we stayed real lean through the middle, so now, wide open throttle we're enriching a little bit sooner not super soon we still want to get some good mileage out of this thing 
but we're holding that nice air fuel ratio all the way out and that's letting us and this should be the same timing i didn't change anything with the timing map i didn't change anything with the um, ignition timing or with the i guess i changed cam timing and some other things uh, fueling cam timing but ignition timing is the same mass airflow is the same so same timing just just better so i'm gonna i still i want to i want to fix this here this is my this is my goal so i'm going to do some small pulls where I'm changing cam timing in the lower RPMs and see what happens and see if I can get, get that, that low end using cam timing. I already did some small cam timing changes, but I'm gonna guess that if I take out some exhaust angle here, because that exhaust angle, that higher exhaust angle is right there. So I'm just gonna change that and we're gonna save this change and we're gonna see if that helps that low end and if it helps that low end then we're gonna do some more and if it doesn't help that low end we're gonna go the other way and we might do the intake cam I don't know we're just gonna do some stuff and see what happens and that's tuning is you just make a change and see if the engine liked the change if it liked the change you make another change if it didn't like the change you go back the other way take this moment while doing a poll to thank all of our sponsors. I'm just kidding. These polls are so anticlimactic, but oh, I'm excited about this. So remember what I just said about trying to, lo I was lowering exhaust cam timing in order to try to pick up some of that bottom end torque. So did it do it? That's the question. Let's let's pull this up and see. Let's see if we picked up. There was a little dip, and that's what we're trying to work out is this little dip. All right. So I started the pull early, like I'm supposed to. Um, let me take off that last run. Let's just do the first run and this most recent one. So the first run, you can see we're now picking up significant power down low, and even if I just pull up all of them here. And even if we just look at our last run right there, I'm way up um, from that last one. And again, I didn't change the ignition timing here. I just changed cam timing and filled in that gap there. So we're gonna actually take some more out. In fact, I'm gonna take some out of the entire map and see if we pick up power just everywhere. Since it seems to be responding to this exhaust angle change, we're just gonna see what it does if I take another 10 degrees out of everywhere where there's that additional 10 degrees. So everywhere where there's 20, we're gonna go down to 10. Everywhere where there's 15, we'll also go down to 10. We're just, oops, down in, in zero, I'm at 10. We're just gonna do 10 degrees and see what happens. So the question is, does taking more exhaust cam timing, does bringing the exhaust cam closer to center line make more power logger log data we're logging log all right here we go Oops, i gotta go lower rpm i started at such a low rpm i don't know why i did that on the first pull but we'll do it again here here we go i hate lugging a car like that but that's what people do with these tires they lug them Oh, good. All right, let's see where we're at here. Let's close, let's close everything but the last two runs here. So, oops, I gotta refresh. Gotta refresh. All right, here we go. This was not this run, this was the run before. So we were 119.2 peak. I'm not so worried about the peaks right now, but it looks like we picked up a little bit in that dip. Look at that. That's five horsepower right there, smoothing it out. And we picked up power from 4,000 to 5,500 as well. And then we're pretty much even until we actually lost a little up here past 6,000. 
So that's really interesting that we picked up power through the middle as well. Um, you know what they say, if, uh, if, if, if you have a good thing, you should stop. But I don't, I don't care. I'm just gonna keep going until we don't make power anymore. And once we don't make power, we're gonna do the intake cam. All right, 20 was, 30 was okay. 20 was better. Here we go, 10 was better. Zero, goose egg. We are going to the center line on the exhaust cam. Will it be better? It's on the center line. I saw it in the log. It sounds better. but is it better anywhere that's the question so what you do when you're using when you're tuning cam timing is you do a bunch of positions and you overlay all the graphs and then you see where it was better and where it was worse and you just kind of build yourself a timing curve for your cam so here we go uh we lost power Oh, not everywhere. Interesting. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, we lost power everywhere. So we're going to go back to the 10 degrees, I think. Yeah, that's, that sounds the best. And we're going to leave it at the 10 degrees at the wide open throttle range. We're going to leave some of the cam overlap um, at the lower throttles because we still want to get some decent mileage. But when you're wide open throttle, we want it to have that torque. And that's kind of our goal. So we'll come back in and we'll compare this zero graph with the original graph and we'll build that table from there. Okay, got our exhaust cam overlays all done and massive, massive gains. Woo! That's big. We're getting, it's getting, the gap up top's getting huge. From 107 to 121 up top, and then down low, we've got 10 foot-pounds of torque through the whole, like, on-throttle area. So, looking pretty good. Now it's time to mess with the intake cam. This is just exhaust cam changes, and then my base map fueling changes and a few other things. So, we're going to dial in the intake cams. Uh, I'm going to do the same process. I'm not going to show the whole thing. I'm just going to show the finals, see if there's any power to be made. We don't know yet. And... Once I'm done with that, then uh, we'll probably be pretty close to done with the tune. I'm not gonna do a lot with ignition timing because this is just 87 octane fuel. Um, we might see if it'll take a little more, but probably not for any kind of e-tunes gonna send out uh, maps with spicy ignition timing on 87. If you want a 91 or a 92 map, we could definitely add some timing. But as far as this is the 87 octane maps go, probably not gonna go crazy with it. So here's where we're at off of cam timing changes primarily. Whoopsies, didn't mean to zoom in. Um, big gains up top and a pretty substantial gain through the entire torque range. Everything past 2000 RPMs, we're seeing, you know, around 10 foot pounds of torque, eight to 10 foot pounds of torque through all of that. So um, not a lot of change off of the intake cam. In fact, basically negligible from where I'd set my base intake cam map, um, which was just kind of smoothing out some of the weird numbers they had. So I'm going to go ahead and add a little ignition timing. I know I said I wasn't, but I'm just curious. I probably won't ship out a tune with more power than this. Um, so 121, 120. So peak for peak, eight, eight to nine horsepower gain, but the big gains are down here and up here. Um, as well as some of the throttle mapping has changed and the car should just be more responsive. So I'm gonna see what some ignition timing does, if it does anything. Um, keep in mind this is 87 octane, so uh, we're not gonna probably see big gains. We may actually see losses. So, well, we're gonna find out. we 
picked up some power, very low RPM, and a little bit of power, very high RPM, very high RPM, but nothing really through the middle. In fact, we had a slight loss through here, so we're gonna go ahead and take everything out except for below 2,500 and above 6,000. And that's what we call minimum best time. So I just did a quick pull back in the parking lot and now I've got a pretty good axle click. So welcome to lifted Subarus. Um, yeah, you can, you can hear that axle clicking on the pole. Poor car. Oh well. But, you know, Axles come, axles go, especially in lifted super bike. Yeah, so these are normally just sadly slow and underpowered. And it's still pretty slow, pretty underpowered. But it's not as slow and it definitely has a little bit more just of that initial get up and go. So it definitely feels, the throttle response feels better. Uh, there is more power, there is more torque, and it, you know, it's, it's, it is moving more air, so it's making more power. Now uh, I got my logger going. Third gear still is really, that's third floor. It's just sad, but it doesn't feel as sad as it did previously, and that's what's important. So it is better, it's not perfect, it's not great. The car could definitely use like a blower or something to make some more power, or just a bigger motor. I think the two fives feel a lot better than these two liters. But for what it is, it's not bad. 